Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on this channel. This time we are going to take a look at how you work with certificates in Azure Key Vault and how you bring them down to your Kubernetes cluster so that you can work, for instance, with something like Nginx Ingress Controller and certificates. It's going to be a rather quick walkthrough. We won't go through all the intricate details, but I hope you'll understand when the video is finished how this process works. Now let's set the scene a little bit. So I'm already starting with a running Kubernetes cluster and it runs Nginx Ingress already. I also have a component, you'll see later in the video more details about this, it's called Azure Key Vault to Kubernetes. That's a controller that can be instructed to continuously look at a secret or in our case a certificate in Key Vault and bring it down to your cluster. So for example, I will configure it to look specifically for a certificate in my Azure Key Vault, and it will do so at regular intervals. It will continuously check for that certificate. When it finds it, it will create a Kubernetes secret for it. So a regular Kubernetes secret. Any application that can work with Kubernetes secrets can then take advantage of it. So an Nginx Ingress controller, of course, can use such a secret and it will do so. Now, of course, the important thing here is what happens when you change the secret in Key Vault. For instance, you renew the secret either manually or you might have an automatic process that auto renews certificate. Well, then, of course, the changes should be picked up and should be synchronized to your secret. And that's exactly what will happen. The Azure Key Vault to Kubernetes controller will see there's a new version. Let's now just, just simply call it V2. And when it sees that, after a while, it will update the existing secret with the new certificate. Of course, depending on your application, it might have to be restarted to pick up this change. Now, luckily, Nginx Ingress does not have to be restarted. It will pick up this change in the secret, in the certificate, of course, that's in the secret, and will then offer that to clients connecting to the server. Let's see in some more detail how this all works. Let's look at Azure Key Vault first. Uh, so remember the scenario, we want to have a certificate in Key Vault. The certificate will be synchronized to our Kubernetes cluster as a secret, and we'll use that secret in an application. Um, of course, if my Kubernetes cluster needs to retrieve the secret or the certificate uh, from this key vault, it needs proper access rights or access policies. So in this case, I'm using the traditional access policy settings here. And if I'm checking here in my list of access policies, you see there's a, a CLU GitOps agent pool that represents my Kubernetes cluster. And here at the certificate permissions level, it just has get. There are many other ones, but I only need get to retrieve the certificate from Key Vault. That's the first thing. Now, of course, I need to have a certificate that I can use in our example here. Now, you can, of course, create a certificate in many different ways. You can use OpenSSL for that, and there are many other tools available. But Key Vault itself can also generate a certificate for you. Uh, if you just click on Generate Import, just select Generate, and you give it a name. For example, in my case, I'm going to call it Nginx. It's self-signed. I'm going to add here that this is for a subject called test.bake.info. And I'm going to add the same name to the DNS names as well. So test.bake.info will be added here as well. That's basically our subject alternative name that we are setting here. Now, the content type can either be PKCS12 or PEM. The component we're using to synchronize this um, certificate to our cluster can handle both of these uh, formats. I'm going to leave the life cycle, lifetime action type as it is. Um, we're not going to bother with that today. And we also don't need this advanced policy configuration. So clicking on create is all that is required for Key Vault to generate this certificate for us. That takes a 
yeah, a moment and after a moment it will be available in the list of completed uh, certificate uh, that is uh, that you see here when i click on the certificate of course you get this information when i click even further you get all the information about your certificate for example you see clearly here that is activated today 2020 the expiration date will be uh, a year further because i set this to 12 months which is 2021 right and a bit lower you can also see that the subject alternative name has been set so if i want to expose via my um, ingress controller a application a web app on the name test info i can of course use the certificate with it i'm now looking at our deployed kubernetes cluster using the k9s tool now we need a component that synchronizes the certificate from key vault into kubernetes as a secret uh, there are several solutions for this on the market i'm typically using the azure key vault to kubernetes controller which is the one which is highlighted over there the version that I'm currently using, if I'm describing this one, is uh, version 1.1.0. More information about this controller can be found at the uh, following URL, that is akv2k8s.io. So just search in Google for this and you'll find it. And here you'll see as well that in the documentation, in the tutorials, you'll find uh, what you need to do to sync a certificate from Azure Key Vault to a secret in Kubernetes. So it's very well explained, good documentation. You're now seeing a YAML file that you can use together with the Azure Key Vault to Kubernetes secrets controller. The first thing I'm doing here is just creating a namespace that we're going to use. The namespace is called Cert Sync. And after we create the namespace, we're creating this resource here of kind Azure Key Vault secret. So this is a custom resource definition that the Azure Key Vault to Kubernetes uh, secrets component uh, understands and acts upon. So what we're telling that component or that controller is that you should go to a Key Vault, which is called uh, Heba KV. That's the short name of my Key Vault and look at a object of type certificate with the name Nginx. That's the one that we just created. Um, when he finds this uh, certificate in the key vault, he should create a secret for this at the Kubernetes level. That secret should be called Nginx-cert. And you need to specify the type that the system knows it has to create a certificate secret uh, for this. So this is normally all that we need to get this secret down into our system. So let's see if that really works. So we're going to apply the uh, cert sync uh, YAML file and see what happens. So let's do so. And I'll make the uh, editor or the terminal a little bit uh, larger here. What we can do is we can take a look at the secrets if that secret is created uh, in uh, our Kubernetes uh, cluster. Now, of course, we have to be aware in what namespace we are looking. So these are the ones in the default namespace. That's not the one that we want. So we want to use the namespace, which is cert sync. And if you look at that, as you can see there now, it has the Nginx cert secret the one that we uh, pointed out here, in fact. So the controller has done its work and has grabbed the certificate from Key Vault and created it in here. Now, it's always a good idea that you do something like, for example, uh, k-get-secret. Uh, uh, and then we'll take a look at the Nginx uh, secret here or cert here. Of course, the namespace uh, should be the cert sync namespace. And I also want to see dash O and then YAML uh, to see what's actually in there. And if we scroll a bit higher, there's a lot of stuff in there, but you should see, and that's quite important, you should see in the data a TLS CRT, which is our certificate. And then of course, you also need the private key, TLS.key of our certificate. Now we're going to use the certificate that's in the secret that we just uh, created. 
Um, I'm first going to deploy my application. That's just a sample application, so it's not really important what is in there. It does not contain the ingress definition. And of course, in the ingress definition, we're going to use the secret that we just created. So I'm just going to apply the application or deploy the application uh, to the searching uh, namespace. Now, if you look at the ingress, that's of course the important part. So what you haven't seen in this video is that I'm actually using Nginx ingress. So the ingress controller is already deployed in my Kubernetes cluster. And of course, with an ingress resource such as this one, which is pre-version 1.19, um, with this kind of ingress resource, I can specify to the ingress controller what he should do. So in this case, I'm saying I'm going to create an ingress called test ingress in the namespace search sync. I want to use the ingress controller with a class of Nginx. That's fine. Uh, there's actually a label in here, which I don't really need. So I'm going to remove uh, this label there. And in the spec of the ingress, we are specifying a couple of things. First of all, we are specifying that we want to use TLS. We want to use a certificate. Yeah. For what kind of host? Well, in this case, other.backer.info, but I actually use test.backer.info. So I'm going to use that URL. It should match, of course, uh, with the uh, subject alternative names that's inside your certificate. Otherwise, Nginx, the ingress controller, will not use the secret that you have um, that you will reference here. And the secret name is, of course, the Nginx cert that we uh, just uh, created. So that's quite important uh, that this certificate uh, really has subject alternative names that match with the host name that you specify here, in this case, the test.bake.info. But of course, we also have to specify yeah, what's the rule that the ingress controller should follow. So indeed, it should listen to incoming requests for test.bake.info. And in this case, it should forward all these requests to a service in the same namespace, which is the real-time service, which is listening on port 80. So when I save this and I'm uh, applying the uh, ingress here, so minus F and then ingress.yaml, uh, we uh, can actually do this. Now, if you do k get ing, you should see after a while, of course, that the address is also there, which will be the IP address of our uh, ingress controller. Now, that can take uh, a moment, so we'll just let it do what it needs to do uh, here. Most important thing to realize is now that we have put our certificate in Key Vault. We have the Azure Key Vault, the Kubernetes secret controller that continuously looks at that one and syncs it down to a secret. The secret is Nginx cert in this case. And then we are telling our ingress controller. It could be any ingress controller. It doesn't have to be Nginx, of course. So I'm just gonna one last time do a Okay, get ink, and there you see now it will be at IP address 20.73 and so forth. So in my DNS server, this should resolve to this address. We are now in this uh, beautifully designed application, and as you can see, the browser is able to use TLS, but of course, it's not as secure as you want it to be because although there is a certificate, the certificate is of course self. Uh, signed. You can see it here. It's uh, issued by and issued to test.baka.info. It's the one that we created in Key Vault. You can see it's one year valid here. And if you go inside the details, you also see that there is a subject alternative name, which is set to test.baka.info as well. We explicitly set that. So that is working. So the ingress controller is doing its thing. It is also uh, correctly using the certificate that's in a Kubernetes secret to create a secure connection here, but of course self-signed, uh, so it's not, uh, not fully secure. Okay, let's now see what happens when we update the certificate. We're now back in Key Vault with our existing certificate, which was valid until 2021. We're going to issue a new version now. now. I'm doing this manually here. Of course, there could be a automatic certificate renewal process that's behind it. So here, again, generate, self-signed. It has kept all the stuff that we already typed in the previous uh, one. But I'm going to make this valid now for 24 months so we can see the actual difference. So I'm going to click uh, Create. 
Now we have indeed temporarily these two versions here, but when I refresh, you'll see that the current version is expiring in 2022 and the older version, the old certificate, is the one that expires in 2021. Now let's see what happens if this gets refreshed into Kubernetes and if Nginx is picking up this new certificate. Although you could go check in the logs of the Azure Key Vault Kubernetes Secrets controller, it won't be directly clear that the secret was updated. So for example, if I'm doing a K get a secret, you see there that the Nginx cert uh, is still there um, and it was created like 32 minutes ago. So there's not like a recent change is not reflected here. Um, of course, if you go a little bit deeper and you look inside the secret uh, and you use dash o yaml to do so, we've got a whole lot of stuff being printed out here. And as you can see, there was also here a operation of type update. And that operation was at 1420. Um, which is uh, behind the creation timestamp of 1354. That matches indeed with my, with my update. So you can see indeed that an update uh, was made here. When I'm going to my application, I already did that and I refresh it and I'm checking the certificate here, not secure certificate. You can see that now it is valid until 2022. So the new certificate was picked up by Nginx. This happens automatically. Just for reference, I'm showing you here via the describe option in K9S, I'm showing you the uh, my Nginx ingress controller deployment and the image that is being used in my system, which is the one, it's the one from Google, so kubernetes.gcr.io, ingress Nginx, and we use version 0.41.2 here. We've come to the end of the video. If you have questions or remarks, of course, do leave them in the comments. And hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.